Good uh, Wednesday to you. Happy to be here. It's 6-22, June 22nd, 2022. And it's the second day of summer. Yesterday was quite beautiful. And uh, it. <laughs> I was reflecting on the first day of summer yesterday, uh, thinking to myself, summer was right on time. It didn't come early. There was no summer or pre-summer in the spring like we normally have. It was kind of spring, 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 June 21, summer. And I'm hoping that summer stays for a while. It looks like it will. So it's good to be together today. Pastor Steve at Richland Lutheran Church, just want to remind you that um, you're welcome here and we're glad you're joining us. And we don't take your uh, trust in the way we communicate and interpret the scriptures. It's a great trust that you're putting in us and uh, in me, and I want to thank you for that. And I don't take it lightly. And again, want to invite <clears throat> invite you into dialogue and discussion. Uh, I am a theologian. Uh, by not only vocation, but uh, out of passion. I really love talking about theology. So in our time together, I get to do that, but it's really one way. And um, so, yeah, would love to talk to you. If there's anything that comes up in our time together or otherwise, it'd be great just to chat about theology. Today we're in the book of Hebrews. Remember, we're going through the names of Jesus. And at the very beginning of the book, the writer of Hebrews, and by the way, Hebrews is a, a bit unique, especially in the New Testament. We don't know the author of Hebrews. And of all the epistles, that means letters, this letter is uh, the one we don't have a pretty good understanding of who the author is. The author isn't mentioned. Uh, this is certainly not Pauline, Pauline um, in the sense that um, the words, the grammar, the concepts are not as Paul would normally teach them. So we're not really sure who wrote the book of Hebrews and there are probably as many guesses as there are people but here nor there, uh, it's written as the name indicates to the people of Israel, Hebrews. And in the very first two verses, we get uh, a several titles of Jesus, but one in particular that we'll pay attention to. So let's read the text before I get ahead of myself. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many, at, at many times and in various ways. Verse 2, but in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom he also made the universe. So the first uh, title of Jesus, maybe it's more of a kind of uh, position, and that is uh, Jesus is named as the son of God, but he's likened to a prophet. And that was one of the functions of Jesus. Theologians say Jesus had three primary functions. He functioned as a prophet. That would be literally a, the mouthpiece of God speaking God's word. He functioned as a priest that means he intercedes on behalf of God's people uh, to God. And the th third primary function of Jesus was that he was king, prophet, priest, and king. And so he played the kingly role in that he is the king of uh, the kingdom of God. Not an earthly or worldly kingdom, but the kingdom of God. So Somebody asks you one of these days down the road, what were the three offices uh, Jesus fulfilled, positions, uh, functions? You could say with conviction and truth, he was prophet, he was priest, and he was king. All three captured in Jesus, the son. And so 
The son then is further developed by the author of Hebrews. So he has spoken us uh, spoken to us by his son, and then there are two qualifying uh, clauses. We'll call them um, whom he God appointed heir of all things. So one of the definitions of a son or a, a mark of a son is that the son uh, inherits what the father has. And in the Jewish culture, it was not just a son, but the first son had the birthright to the inheritance. So the firstborn son was the heir of the father's ownings, holdings, property, and all the rest. Jesus is called here heir of all things. Uh, th this, I think the author uses to help us understand more fully that Jesus isn't just a son type, isn't a stepson, <laughs> uh, isn't just a spiritual son, but more pointedly, that Jesus is the son of God. And so this is really important, especially as we develop our understanding of who Jesus is. This area of study is called Christology, um, the study of Christ. And getting our Christology right when it comes to Jesus is of the utmost importance in our faith, namely because how we understand Jesus helps us to better understand God himself. And that's why we're going through all these names and titles, by the way. So Jesus is not just God's son in the same sense that I'm a son of God, because that's what the Bible also teaches. First uh, John chapter three, we are um, uh, uh, see what God, see how uh, great a love God has lavished on us, in that we are children of God. And that is what we are. We are called children of God, and that is what we are. Many places in Scripture, we are referred to as God's sons or, or, and or God's daughters. But not a son. Jesus is not a son, but he is the son. Because he is heir to all things. And the Hebrew would know that all things belong to God. So this is significant, this title of Jesus, heir of all things. Then the second clause here brings even more clarity to what the author of Hebrews means by son. So he has spoken us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, the true heir, son of God, and through whom. So now, got to keep our minds straight here. Through whom? Through Jesus, um, God also made the universe. Ah, interesting. Let's read verse 2 um, completely now. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. Not only is Jesus the Son of God, but the pre existent Son of God, a true Son who existed before he was born. Again, giving both a nod to Jesus' humanity, he's a son and an heir, and to his divinity. He is a son who is creator of the universe. This is where one of the places we pick up our understanding of Jesus and his natures, that he was both human in nature and at the same time divine in nature. 
All right. That's enough for Tuesday, I suppose. I, I guess it's Wednesday. That's enough for midweek for hump day. Hopefully you enjoyed our study. I encourage you, as I always do, to spend a few moments after uh, we're here to ask God what it is he wants to tell you and speak to you uh, through this time. Let's pray. God, thank you that uh, clearly Jesus is uh, the heir of all things, the creator of the universe. He is the son of God. Help us to understand more fully who you are, Jesus, who you are, triune God, and where we fail, where we lack understanding, we pray that, Holy Spirit, you would intervene on our behalf and uh, lead us to a place of knowing you, understanding you more fully. Jesus, it is in your name we pray. Amen. It's been great to be with you, friends. I love you. I miss you. I hope to see you soon. For those of you who are out of the habit of joining us on Sundays for worship in person, who can make it out, would encourage you to do so. Um, would love to see you. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.